Those whose dreams and visions have become a reality will also tell you about the story, how they actually got there. Hi, this is Barry Phillips. It's 10 minutes toward day five of Lech Lecha. We are in Genesis, Bereshit, chapter 13. Let's begin with verse 14 and read to the end of the chapter. And after Lot had separated from him, that is from Avram, Yahweh said to Abraham, Now lift up your eyes and look from the place where you are, present tense, northward and southward, eastward and westward, future tenses, or at least references. For all the land which I see you, I shall give to you and your seed forever. There's your promise, your vision, your dream. And I shall make your seed as the dust of the earth, continuing the explanation of the dream. So that if a man could count the dust of the earth, then your seat also could be counted. Arise and walk in the land through its length and its width, for I give it to you. Again, now we're about the present. So Abraham moved his tent, went and dwelt by the terebinth trees of Mamre, which are in Hebron, and built a slaughter place there to Yahweh. There he goes building a slaughter place again, as we talked yesterday. So, Abram is given uh, an enlarged vision. It's the same vision. It's the same circumstances that he was called to the land for. But now Yah is enlarging upon, and he will continue to do so as uh, Abram, later to be Abraham, goes through all these particular paces of how things are and what they're going to be. He is given the promise of possessing his possession, the land, the covenant, the title deed to the land, and that it will be multi-generational to the effect that his seed will become so numerous they cannot be counted. None of that is a reality at the moment. There are still Canaanites and Hittites and various other ites that are in the land. He doesn't have an heir He doesn't know the full extent of his inheritance and this promise. He's going on what he's got for the moment. The reality is he's not ready for any of this yet. And there are at least five reasons why, which I will give you now. Number one, he is not ready to possess all the land. He can maintain a spot, an area. He has enough uh, with him, perhaps servant-wise and weapon-wise and strength-wise, to guard over his flocks and his herds and a small geographical area. That's what he's able to possess momentarily. But his life is also nomadic. He is moving from one grazing place to the next. And so his location is very much determined by the, the field's an agricultural ability to take care of his possessions, his animals. He's not large enough to possess all of his possession yet. That indeed may be your situation as well. You have a possession, you have a promise, you have a a goal, agenda, a destiny, but you're not there yet because you're not able to hold it all yet. Number two, he has no heir yet. So, If he had all these things in his hand and in his ability, who's he going to leave it to? There's no one to leave it to. Let me ask you a question. Are you raising up anybody with you to take over after you? Simple question. Number three, he has no descendants numerous enough to maintain the possession. Again, he needs to build not only servants, but also descendants, family. Uh, A servant is going to run and hide when the hardest of times come, unless they're extremely loyal. He needs those that are by bloodline and lineage invested. That's why the Jews in Israel are not moving. It's because they are by blood and by lineage and by heritage and by now history. They are there and they're not moving. Number four, he's not Abraham yet. In other words, there are other changes to the man and his identity, his total uh, reality of himself, 
that need to take place before the full possession of things can be realized. You, maybe I myself, we're not ready yet for all that is to transpire, all that is to be placed within our purview or responsibility. And so we, uh, we're not there yet. And we may have to be patient and waiting for Yah to do some work on us. I know that many of you are already perfect. Maybe you don't need a whole lot of refining, but maybe a little more than you might think. So as we go through all of this concerning Avram at this point, and we make some application to ourselves, let's realize that as we go through our own personal testing, there are at least three components that I'll share with you that work together in steps to bring us to a, a better version of ourselves that is more capable of possessing our possession. Number one, first of all, is the reveal. What is the reveal? Well, that's where we are pushed to some extreme level of uh, a call to endurance or perseverance or overcoming some circumstances or such situation has found itself into our lives to where now we're called on to reach down deep and we need to pull up from some resources and uh, we cry out to him and it is a time where our strength and our ability is firmly not only tested but revealed to us in other words, it's an awakening. It's a, a come-to-reality moment. And I've said this many, many times. We don't know who we are until we've been pushed and stressed, stretched and stressed. And there is this requirement that we encounter that. It's not fun. No one volunteers to go walking through the fire. No one's praying, hey, Father, I'm ready for my next test. Uh, can you go ahead and send it now while I'm ready? Uh, that's foolishness. But when it comes, we find out who we are. Secondly is then, in addition to that, the next step is refining. The refining is where we learn what we don't need as much as what we do need. We look at our lives and we realize, okay, this is a problem and this is a hindrance and uh, I've carried this baggage long enough and those kinds of things where we start uh, cleaning house, streamlining is another word, where we refine ourselves and purify ourselves not only in the stuff that we have accumulated outwardly, but also the stuff on the inside. We lay down grudges that we've carried. We lay down memories that we keep going back to. We go back to um, the things that we thought we learned that were true out of other situations that turned out not to be so true. And we get rid of these things and we lay them aside. And then we also uh, realize what resources we really do have. And we start refining and building them. We call upon the gifting that maybe we've neglected or forgotten about and learn to use that powerfully in such a way as to be um, more capable and strengthened in our process, which leads us then to the final step, which is being renewed in strength. Being renewed, a better version of ourselves. This is partly where Avram becomes Avraham and it's not that Abraham is the perfect model, but he, he gets somewhere. We have been tempered by the test of fire. The hand of Yah has been revealed to us. We recognize that we are stronger when Yah works for us than when we lean on our own abilities all by ourselves. We're wiser. We've learned. Uh, our scars remind us of what we have learned. And we, we come to the place where we genuinely trust him because he has proven himself to us through the reveal, through the refining, not just once, but many times over. Here is where one is mature in the Spirit and walks in the Spirit. And this is the place that we all want to get to, but you can't jump from the promise of a possession to this last state without the other things intervening. 
Uh, Shabbat Shalom. May the light and the glory and the rest that is genuinely yours in Messiah Yeshua be found by you and yours on this Shabbat. Thank you so much for those who pray for us. Thank you for those who write to us and who um, comment and who support us. And I uh, just wish you the best Shabbat this Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom. 